Hi everyone uh, and welcome to today's lesson on relative formula mass. This is for the GCSE chemistry. So my name is Miss Dieters and um, the equipment that you need for today is a pen and if you've got like a scrap bit of paper that'll do for now. Obviously if you're keeping all of your notes nice and organised together I suggest that you use lined paper or a workbook. You will need for this lesson, it's quite important, a periodic table and a calculator. Okay, so a periodic table and a calculator is quite important. It'd be quite difficult to actually sort of take part in this lesson without those things. Um, right, so while you're getting your things together, okay, while you're getting focused, maybe you're writing down today's title and the learning objectives, um, you can have a think about these starting questions. Okay, there are five questions, and it's just to recap some of the things that you might already know, um, and it'll certainly help you in today's lesson. OK, so we're going to be looking at relative uh, formula mass in terms of the definition. Uh, we'll be calculating the relative formula mass and we'll be practicing quite a range of example questions, OK, including a couple of GCSE past paper questions. So what I'd like you to, to do is I'd like you to pause this video and have a look at these five questions. You can either do this in your head or verbally, or you can do this uh, written down, of course, on a piece of paper. So pause the video and have a go at answering these questions. OK, we're going to go through the answers now. All right. So make sure that you have had a go, please. Um, the first question, the number of protons in an atom is known as what? So I've kind of flipped the question around. Usually they ask you to define atomic number. All right. But the number of protons in an atom is known as the atomic number. OK, so that's a number that's found on every symbol. OK, every box in the periodic table, every element has its own atomic number. So well done if you've got that. I will show the answers in a second if you prefer to kind of tick them off. But let's go through these. So number two, it says, what does the mass number of an atom tell us? What does it tell us? Well, it tells us the number of protons and neutrons. OK, protons and neutrons. So really well done if you've got that correct. Number three, where is the majority of an atom's mass concentrated? So they're asking for the location, the location in the atom where the majority of a ma uh, mass is concentrated. And hopefully you said nucleus. Yeah, nucleus. Number four, it says, how do we work out the number of neutrons in an atom? If we're just given a periodic table, for example, how do I work out the number of neutrons of lithium? Let's use lithium as example. Well, hopefully you've remembered that you take the mass number or the relative atomic mass and you minus the atomic number, okay? Number five, it says, how many neutrons does sodium have? Well, again, you need your periodic tables for this. So really well done if you had a look at your periodic tables. Let's look at the answer for that one. It's 12, 12 neutrons in Na or sodium because you need to do the mass number minus the atomic number. All right, so if you've got these answers, if you wrote them down, now's an opportunity for you to get out a different colour pen maybe and tick them or uh, mark them incorrect if you weren't quite there. And obviously make sure you're correcting your answers as you go because it's really, really good learning to be able to do that. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly go over the basics just for a minute, okay, because it's really important that you understand it. And actually you can't really understand the, the, the majority of the lesson if you haven't really grasped this and if you've mastered these ideas. So if I'm looking at this on my periodic table, okay, hopefully you recognize that we've got the symbol, we've got, um, usually they have the word, okay, so they have the name of the element, which is lithium. You've also got the atomic number and you've got the mass number. Right, so the mass number tells us the number of protons and neutrons. So lithium has seven protons and neutrons. It has three protons because that's the atomic number. Okay, so if I wanted to, if, if the question was asking, asking me for the uh, numbers of subatomic particles in lithium, so subatomic, small part of the atom, okay, then you're, you're going to have to know the protons, the electrons and the neutrons. So you're going to have to know the numbers just by looking at this box in the periodic table. So the number of protons lithium has is three because that's the atomic number. It's also the number of electrons, all right? So it also has three electrons because the number of protons equals the number of electrons in an atom. And to work out the number of neutrons, then I do the mass number minus the atomic number, all right? Just a little bit of a heads up, the atomic number doesn't always equal the number of neutrons because some people get used to that because they see it quite 
quite um, often on the periodic table. So they'll end up kind of doing that quickly, but I've given lithium as an example because it's different, okay? It has a different number of protons and neutrons. All right, so I hope that's clear. If you're not sure of any of this, it's quite difficult to kind of move on. So please make sure that you've mastered these ideas. Um, and if you're, if you're really, really lost, then I suggest kind of looking back at previous videos to make sure that this is clear. We're going to go straight into the first learning objective. OK, so I'm going to define relative atomic mass and it links to formula mass. And I'll, I'll tell you why in a second. But as a definition, as a, just a standard definition that you just have to learn for the GCSE, um, I want you to learn this. So it says the average mass of, an at of atoms of an element compared with carbon-12, OK? Um, now, that's just a fancy way of kind of saying, well, it's the average mass of atoms of an element compared, you know, um, that we find on the periodic table. This bit, it says compared with carbon-12. Again, it's a little bit advanced, but just to give you an idea of what that kind of means, um, you know, we say that hydrogen has a mass of one. We say that helium has a mass of um, four, for example. OK, so what that actually means, because it's not grams, it's not kilograms, there's no unit, it's relative. And what is it relative to? Like, what is it compared to? Well, we could, we've compared it as scientists to the mass of carbon-12. All right, we say that carbon is 12. That's our kind of standalone, that's our, that's our starting point. And everything else is actually compared to that. Don't worry if I've lost you. OK, for now, all you need to know is as a definition, it's the average mass of atoms of an element compared with carbon-12. All right. Now, remember that AR, or a, a relative atomic mass, OK, so that's, that's a way of saying relative atomic mass, it's the same as the mass number. So if I, if I asked you to look at your periodic tables now and tell me what is the AR or the relative atomic mass of lithium, you should tell me that it's seven. OK, it's the same as the mass number. All right. So, so it's looking a little bit more complicated than it really is. The relative atomic mass is the same as the mass number. And we find that on the periodic table. All right. Now, I'm just obviously showing you what your periodic table will look like or look something like this in the GCSE. So again, we've got the relative atomic mass I wanted to show you as the key, which will be at the top. OK, so the relative atomic mass, we know now that it's actually all compared to carbon-12, but the relative atomic mass you would find at the top of each of these elements in the periodic table. Let's look at relative formula mass. So most substances are made of molecules, not individual atoms. OK, so if you look around you, most of the things that you can see or feel, if you're flapping your hands around, you can feel the air. OK, so you can feel oxygen and carbon dioxide and you can feel water vapour. Most of the things that exist are molecules, OK, not individual atoms. It's quite rare just to get individual atoms of things. So molecules are really small. Of course, they are. So can we work out their masses in the same kind of way? So if I'm asking you from the mass of a lithium atom, you would say seven. But can we work out the mass of molecules like water or carbon dioxide? Yes, yes, we can. OK, so the mass of a molecule is called the relative formula mass, and it's calculated by adding up the relative atomic masses of atoms in that molecule. Again, if I'm losing you, don't worry, it will come very, very clear, but I'm just kind of leading you to, to, to the main part of today, which is calculating relative formula mass, okay? Relative formula mass. So to calculate the relative formula mass of a compound or molecule, we add together the masses of the elements that it makes up. So for example, water, okay? Water is H2O, hopefully you should know that, all right? And if I asked you for the relative formula mass of water, you need to look back at your periodic tables and you need to say, right, what's the mass of hydrogen? And, you know, I've got two of those. So the mass of hydrogen is one because I can look at that on my periodic table. I'm just going to quickly show you. So the mass is at the bottom. The mass of hydrogen is one. Okay, sorry, the mass is at the top. It's one anyway. So I've got the water. I've got H2O. I've got two waters. Okay, so I've got two ones. And then I've got an oxygen which has got a mass of 16. So I'm just going to add those together. OK, so I've got one and one because they're the, I've got two hydrogens and I've got one oxygen atom, which has a mass of 16. All together, that makes 18. It's as simple as that. All right, let's try a couple more examples. 
just to make sure you've really understood. OK, so I want you to work out, please, the formula masses of the following substance. What is the relative formula mass of Br2? So again, look at your periodic tables, OK? Find out the mass of one bromine atom. Therefore, make sure that you've you know, understood that there's two of them. So I'm going to do cat number times two, and that's going to be my answer. All right. I'm going to stop talking because I want you to pause this video and I want you to have a go, just have a guess for me. I will go through working in a second. But I'd really like you to have a go. Remember, relative formula mass, all you're doing is you're checking the mass numbers on the periodic table and you're essentially just adding them together. Pause the video now and have a go at these three examples, please. Okay, let's go through the answers. All right, so this is just the working. This is the working to kind of show you how I got there. What I'll do is I'll show you uh, the answers as well. All right, so I've got two atoms of bromine. One atom of bromine is 80. So I'm just going to times it by two and I get 160. I don't have a unit, guys, okay? So I don't have like kilograms or grams or even, I don't know, um, centimeters cubed. I don't have anything of that, okay, of that nature because it's relative, okay? So I, I don't have to put a unit. So for PCl5, Apologies if you thought that was an I, okay, it's not, it's Cl for chlorine, okay. Um, so there's one phosphorus atom, which is 31, and there's five chlorine atoms, which are each 35.6. So I've worked out the mass of the chlorines and I've worked out the mass of phosphorus and add them together and I get 208.5. If you're wondering why chlorine's a bit weird and it's got um, a mass number, which is a decimal, okay, which is 35.5. I answer that in another video. For this one, we've got sulfuric acid. Well done if you spotted that that's sulfuric acid. Um, I've got two atoms of hydrogen, one of sulfur and four of oxygen. I'm going to read off those masses from the periodic table, add them all together, and I get a relative formula mass of 98. Really well done if you've got those correct. Give yourself lots of ticks. Now it's just about practice. OK, so we're going to have lots more practice. Um, and then I'm going to finish off the session with a GCSE past paper question, just so you can kind of see how they would uh, apply this into a, a question that you would get in your GCSE. All right, so there are lots of different examples now on the screen. There's 20. I've done two for you. Yeah, I've done two examples for you, but there's 20 different examples. Um, it's completely up to you how much practice you want. So I'm going to suggest that you pause the video now and you kind of pick and choose. OK, so maybe if you're thinking, oh, OK, maybe I need a little bit more practice. I think I've got it. But I'm not very confident. So I would suggest that you start at three and maybe work your way up to nine. OK, and just do three to nine. That's fantastic. That's really, really good effort. If you're thinking, oh, I've got this and I totally understand it, like I'm, I'm, I'm way ahead, um, then I'd suggest you have a go at some of these trickier ones. All right, for example, 17, 18, 19, and 20 is really tricky because you haven't seen these kind of molecules before. Okay, it's actually crystals, but um, have a go at those. If not, then have a go at maybe 13, 14, 15, and 16 because a couple of those have brackets. So it's just kind of testing your knowledge about brackets. I'm just going to suggest you pick and choose the ones that you feel comfortable with. Maybe say, minimum of three, maximum of 10. If you want to have a go at all of them, then by all means. So pause the video now and pick the ones that you want to have a go at. Remembering you are calculating the relative formula mass. For this, I'd suggest you use a calculator. Okay, don't be a hero. Don't do it in your head. You'll have a calculator in your GCSE, so why would you not use it? I suggest you use a calculator and I suggest you use a periodic table. Pause the video now and have OK, I am going to show the answers, so please make sure you have had a go, even if it's a couple. Um, these are the answers. The answers are on the screen now. Again, feel free to feel free to pause this video and to, to mark them. OK, so go through in a different color pen and kind of give yourself lots of ticks and just check that you've really understood. If you haven't, then obviously go back a little bit in the video and make sure you've seen how I've kind of broken each of them down. If you've got any of these incorrect, then I wouldn't worry too much, okay? I don't think you're going to be getting this level in GCSE. It's just to really, really push those that are wanting to be pushed, okay? As long as you've understood brackets, as long as you've understood that there are two oxygen atoms and two hydrogen atoms in this whole compound, that's great. 
Let's finish off um, well, just by looking at a GCSE question, okay, from a previous paper and seeing how they could ask you these kind of questions. Now, things relating to relative formula mass are usually part of a bigger question, all right? So it'll be probably be a question that's linked to moles or reacting masses or any of the quantitative chemistry stuff. So it's very rare that you get a question that's just asking for relative formula mass, but you might. And I've managed to find one. OK, so this is an AQA past paper question, but it's equally applicable to the OCR and Edexcel specifications. So what I would like you to do is I would like you to pause this video and have a quick go. All right. They have actually given you the relative atomic masses. so You don't really even need the periodic table. All you need is your brain, maybe a calculator. And I would like you to pause this video. OK, so we're going to go through the answers now. So hopefully you've had a go at this. Um, they've given you some information about iron. OK, it's an essential part of the human diet. They've given you the formula for iron three sulfate, or just iron sulfate. Don't worry about the, um, the Roman numerals for now. OK, that's in a different video. And it says calculate the relative formula mass for iron sulfate. It's giving you iron sulfate. It's giving you the relative atomic masses. Hopefully you've got an answer of one, five, two. Yeah, so the answer is one, five, two. It says ignore any units. It says if you've got the correct answer, you just get two marks straight away. Um, if you've done the working, but you've got the answer incorrect, you get one mark. All right, so really well done with that. Um, there are very few GCSE questions, like I say, that are just standalone calculate the relative formula mass because they're part, they're usually part of a much bigger question um, in the quantitative chemistry kind of topics. Okay, so really, really well done. Um, I hope you enjoyed the lesson. And I will see you again soon.